right, welcome to the first episode in the Couple Linux Spotlight series. I decided to take a different approach with the show this time around. Rather than covering one topic per episode, I figured maybe I can cover a few. Or one or two, or whatever. You know, um, this is a new idea I've noticed in the time that I've been gone from YouTube. You know, shows have started taking different approaches on how they're doing things, and I figured, why not? I can do something a little bit different, too. All right, so, um, first, a number of you wanted to know what my new specs are, and uh, thanks to Joe Johnson, one of my moderators at cupoflinux.com. Thank you, Joe. He submitted a uh, ThinkPad W530, and I upgraded it once I received it so that uh, I could do some pretty interesting stuff. If we open up my terminal here, this is NeoFetch that I'm using, by the way, kids. That displays the information on the screen about my uh, computer. I am using a ThinkPad W530. This has 16 gigs of RAM, and I threw in a 120 gig solid-state drive for the operating system and home directory, and then the original uh, 500 gig 7200 RPM drive replaced the optical drive. I mean, really, who uses DVDs anymore anyway? Everything, you know, I, I burn everything to a USB stick and just pop it in that way, you know? <laughs> so it is what it is. This is an Intel i7. It's a quad core, and it is... Uh, presently running for performance at 3.7 gigahertz with the NVIDIA Quattro, and I have the um, onboard uh, Intel graphics turned off, so it's only using discrete. It's the only way I could get this thing to work with my TV and uh, have better graphics performance on the next topic. So once again, Joe Johnson... Thank you so much for supporting the community by, you know, helping me out with this. This has enabled us to have 1080p. And most importantly, thank all of you who uh, have been supporting CupofLinux.com all along with your donations. You've managed to help me keep the site operational. And I really, really can't thank all of you enough. And I wish I could name you all by name, but there are way too many of you. So thank you, all of you for your support in that area. Now, let's move on to a big topic that a lot of people have been going crazy about this week, myself included. I am excited about this. And Uncle Gabe Newell and his team at Steam. Team at Steam, team at Steam. Haha, <laughs> I love it. They have come out with their own implementation of wine called Proton. And this has really opened up my entire Steam library to me, so now I can install... I don't have to have Steam installed inside of Wine to play my games. I've got a little bit more experimenting to do on it, but let me show you how it works. Okay, uh, let's get some windows open here, and I'll show you. If I go into where I have uh, my Steam library set up on the external drive, and I uh, go into my Steam library folder here, in Steam Apps, and under, I think it's Common, Proton, and you look inside here, you're going to see that it has Wine Binary. So, um, I, 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 now, I could be wrong. I think I read that they um, were working with Code Weavers and the Wine Project on this, so they're, they're, I guess they're swapping code and that sort of thing. And so we're really going to start seeing some innovations in wine. So, and it works. I can't believe it. All right. So what I did was um, for my Steam launcher, for those of you on XFCE with the whisker menu, you can right click an icon in your launcher and then you can edit the application. All right. And then what I did was I added this line here to the, before the percent U dash capital S in silent. And when I go to launch this, what's going to happen is Steam's going to open up without all of those annoying pop-up windows. 
So I'm going to go ahead and launch it, and you're going to notice next to my little uh, screen capture camera here, I'm using Simple Screen Recorder, kids. The Steam icon is available, and then I can launch um, uh, one of these games. Now, for some weird reason, this has a bunch of games on here. Some of them I haven't even played, and I can't get rid of these. If any of you know how to do that, Tell me on cupoflinux.com, please, because uh, that, that's kind of an eyesore seeing all that. All right, I need to be invisible so people aren't bugging me. Okay, let's go into settings here. Now, in order to be able to use Proton, you're going to need to ensure that in your settings panel on the account page, you need to make sure that you are in the Steam beta update. When you press OK... It will restart Steam, and then Steam Play will appear here. All right? Now, I've had the opportunity to try out uh, both Proton 373 and 375 Beta, and I have found 373 works for the titles that I have decided to play, so I decided to stick with this initially when I first got it. Uh, Siva suggested I try 375. I had some problems with Skyrim. It wouldn't write uh, the per preferences INI file where it would do it in 373. Okay, so I just have it set enable Steam Play for all title tiles. And uh, for this one, use this tool instead of game specific selectors from Steam. I'm assuming now that um, if there's a Windows option um, for the game, it will use Proton maybe rather than using the Linux client. I could be wrong on that, though. Uh, I'm just making a guess here. Because I do know uh, sometimes I've had better results playing the game in Wine rather than using their wonky... Linux port that was done half arced. So your mileage will vary. Play with the different settings and see what you get. Okay, so you can just, you know, once you enable that, you can go into your library and all of your games are listed. All right, and you'll see I have a, a few games installed right now. And, um, Specifically, The Elder Scrolls Skyrim. That game is, has always been one of my favorites to play. And uh, The Witcher Enhanced Edition, which is also uh, a Windows-only game. I have them both installed, and they run great. Let me show you. So, um, I can just right-click and then select to play the game. I don't have these set up to play in full screen because sometimes I may be chatting. I'll have a chat room open or something like that, and I might want to be able to see what's going on. So sometimes having the game in not full screen so I can see other elements on the screen is perfectly fine. Um, and the game is playing beautifully. The frame rate is magnificent on this hardware, so I can't complain. And actually, um, I took the I, I, I played a little bit of this. And uh, I had it uh, running on Ultra on the highest settings, and it just, it's smooth. I love it. So, you can see here that the performance is quite well, but actually those are just the opening, uh, opening scenes. Now, of course, this would be loading much, much faster if uh, I had this on the SSD, but um, no, I'm, <laughs> I need that SSD for the OS. All right, so we're good to go. And for some reason, there's uh, a few little graphical anomalies uh, not playing this. Um, I played this in full screen earlier, and I could see all of the elements now. Got a little bit of an anomaly, but I know if I play it in full screen, it's perfect. It was perfect anyway, so uh, good stuff indeed. Just that at this point, um, uh, it's not showing some of the graphics. Not really worried about it, because when I go full screen, we'll be fine. Okay, let's close this game. And let's uh, try uh, Skyrim. 
this one, uh, I have a video up where I showed you all the tricks and stuff for getting all of your um, mods and stuff working. And I'm going to have to try this now with all of my mods using this method and see if I can get it to work. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Who knows? We'll find out. So let's uh, run the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Okay, and uh, this time it didn't detect my card. Let's look at the options. Okay, and uh, I'm still on the uh, high setting, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and play. And I've got this on the uh, highest quality settings as well. Uh, the playback is relatively smooth. I mean, it's a little bit choppier since I've got screen capture going on. Uh, but all in all, I'm very pleased with it. Now, um, thus far, since I have been doing some experimenting uh, with this, um, the enhanced edition of this game isn't working. Um, I think that's a, a DirectX 11 port. Uh, by Imagine in Time, you know, um, they'll actually improve this, and they'll have things to where you'll be able to play just about anything on it. I installed XB on the Frontier. That's an old game. I got that working. Um, so pretty much um, the only game that didn't work was the was the uh, Elder Scrolls Skyrim Special Edition. That one wouldn't work, but all the other Windows games in this library that I tried seemed to work very well. So, for those of you out there saying that you're never going to try Linux because you can't run games on it, well, guess what? <laughs> you're running out of excuses because Pretty soon, um, I have every reason to believe that we're going to have um, some excellent uh, gameplay on here. I understand that a lot of games are going to be using the new Vulkan technology, and games that are programmed with that will run beautifully in Steam Play. At any rate, I'm really pleased with what I'm seeing here. I think uh, this is definitely a step in the right direction uh, for Valve. So, uh, Mr. Newell, thank you. We really appreciate this. Uh, this looks awesome, and I can't wait to see what you're going to do with this next. Good stuff, indeed. Uh, if you guys have any uh, comments on on uh, this, please visit me at cupoflinux.com and... Uh, Give me a shout on the forum. That's where I respond to people. Really, I don't come on YouTube to read comments that much unless I'm really bored. <laughs> so the only way to really interact with Spatry is at cupoflinux.com. I'm in there all the time. And if I'm not in there, I've got some awesome staff members that hang out there too. And they're always willing to help people, especially newcomers, uh, people who are you know, transitioning over from another operating system to our magnificent Linux platform. Good stuff, indeed. Uh, on my next episode of Couple Linux Spotlight, I'm going to look at two really nice OSs. I'm going to look at the look at the uh, Solus Budgie, which actually shipped on this ThinkPad, thanks to Joe Johnson, and that's his favorite OS. So I figured, okay, I'll have a look at that. And then Spearmint 2 requested that I have a look at Mint Mate. And I can't pass that one up because it's been a long time since I've looked at Mint. Mint and uh, that is looking quite sharp. So I figure I'll show you both of those operating systems in action on the next cup of Linux Spotlight. And um, that'll be sometime next week. So until then, thank you for watching and peace out. Mm -hmm.